You're watching KLTX, Channel 15, serving the city of Lufkin. Good evening and welcome to the 100th annual Chamber Banquet. It's presented by Premier Kia and we are so appreciative of Premier Kia. So would you help me thank them? For those of you that I don't know, my name is Tara Watson Watkins and I'm the president and CEO of the Lufkin Angelina County Chamber of Commerce and it is my honor to be here with you tonight. It's a wonderful night. We have 89 tables, 250 more people this year than last year. And we are so excited. At this time, we'd like to recognize our sponsors for the evening. Again, our presenting banquet sponsor, Premier Kia. Our gold sponsors, CHI St. Luke's Health Memorial and Lockheed Martin. Our silver sponsors, Southside Bank and Angelina College. Our reception sponsor, Lee Trans. Our 100th birthday bash sponsor, Pilgrims. And our media sponsors, KTRE TV Channel 9 and the Lufkin Daily News, as well as so many partners in trade. A1 Party Rentals, Angelina Brewing Company, Brickshire Brothers and 1921 Catering, Liza's Gardens, Sound Tech, and Janelle Short, art teacher at Huntington ISD who did the beautiful stage tonight. Would you please help me thank all of our sponsors. We also want to recognize all of our volunteers who helped get this room ready for you tonight. We could not do it without the work of the men and women that we call diplomats. They serve tire tirelessly behind the scenes of the chamber, and we appreciate all that you do to make our lives a lot easier and to make sure that tonight's event came off without a hitch. Also, a big thank you to Josh Gentry with The City and Channel 15, as well as Blake Polino and BP Films for helping with the videos that you'll be seeing throughout the evening. Our diplomats are a key group of volunteers for the chamber. They attend many, many events. And currently, we have over 40 diplomats. Each year, we recognize individual diplomats based on points awarded for attendance at many chamber events and special recognition as chamber all-stars for those that have gained over 125 points each year. Tonight, we have 13 individuals that we want to recognize tonight. And then one of those will be our diplomat of the year. Would you please stand as your name is called? Bonnie Dowdy with Music World. Jennifer LaCourt, Angelina Beautiful Clean. Kendall Beatty, Abelts Gaslight Pharmacy. Lisa Crow, Timber Country Real Estate. Michelle Briley, Commercial Bank of Texas. Crystal Williams, Mac Williams & Son Heating and Air Conditioning. Brianna Murphy, CHI St. Luke's Health Memorial. Rebecca Dilday, Hospice in the Pines. Roger Lindsay, Encore Electric Delivery. LaMarcus Wallace, eTech. Jeannie Schull, eTech. Lynn Lentz, Datamax. And Randy Lewis with the House of Compassion. Would you please help me thank those 13 All Stars? Our recipient of the 13th Diplomat of the Year Award has dedicated countless hours to the diplomat team. Please help me congratulate your 2019 Diplomat of the Year, Rebecca Dilday with Hospice in the Pines. At this time, I'd like to ask Jerome Brimage, pastor at First United Methodist Church, to come give our invocation. If you'd bow for a word of prayer. Oh God, you are the creator of the heavens and of the earth from the time the sun rises in the morning to break forth the darkness and light till it sets in the evening time. God, a hundred years gives many deep roots to this community. And, oh God, we give you thanks for all the roots of the past and the shoulders we stand on. And we give you thanks for a future that Jeremiah would say is filled with hope where greater things are yet to come. 
And for all the many powerful and wonderful events, this community is about people and about relationships. So let us not, O oh God, forget that tonight, tonight you would weave us together. The psalmist would say that our cup would overflow and surely goodness and mercy would follow us all the days of our lives. So we call upon you to be during our time together as we break bread together, as we renew old friendships. And God, we ask that you would help us to make new relationships tonight so that this community can continue to represent you. In your son's name we pray. Amen. Please enjoy your dinner from 1921 Catering, and we'll be back to start our program soon. hope you have enjoyed dinner and if you have just been served we um we want you to continue to eat but we have a lot going on this evening so we're going to get the program started would you please help me thank Berkshire Brothers and 1921 catering for delicious meal if you could have only seen the giant vat of parmesan risotto cooking all back there in fact she stirred it with an oar so it was delicious Kate great job we are so fortunate tonight to have several state, national, and local elected officials here or their representatives, and we want to ask them to stand and be recognized. If you'd please hold your applause until the very end. Senator Robert Nichols, State Representative Trent Ashby, Lufkin Mayor Bob Brown, Judge Don Linberry, Don Glover and Jake Ellis with Senator Robert Nichols' office, Melinda Cardi representing U.S. Congressman Lu Congressman Louis Gomert's office, and we appreciate the congressman trying to make it tonight. Linda Parker with Representative Trent Ashby's office. We also have Lufkin City Manager Keith Wright and Huntington City Administrator Bill Stewart. Would you please help me thank all of them for being here tonight? Would all of our city, county, and school, as well as other elected officials that are with us tonight, please stand so that we can recognize you as well. Thank you so much for all that you do for our community. Several of our neighbors from Nacogdoches, the Nacogdoches County Chamber of Commerce are with us tonight and we want to give you a warm welcome. I know that Wayne Mitchell, President and CEO of the Nacogdoches Chamber of Commerce is here as well as the Nacogdoches Chairman of the Board, Claire Robbins. Thank you so, for so much for being here tonight. I could not go any farther tonight without thanking the most incredible group of people and women that I know in my life, my fantastic staff. Chief Financial Officer Jill Roberson, Director of Events and Engagement Tara Hendricks, Director of Marketing Megan Whitworth, Director of Leadership Programs Ashley Berry, Recruiter Donna Parrish, who got 91 new investors this year, way to go Donna, and our Administrative Assistant Megan Wagner. Would y'all please stand and please help me give them a round of applause. Anyone will tell you that I do not believe in micromanaging. I truly believe that it's important to empower those that work with you, not for you. Because we are nothing without a great team and I have the best team ever. I have been so blessed to surround myself with an incredible, incredible team that's not afraid to disagree with me. We push each other daily to be the best servants of this community that we can possibly be. We listen to each other. We laugh a lot together. We cry together and we pray together. We want to be visionaries for this incredible community that we call home. And I just wanna thank all of you publicly for all that you do, for all the craziness that you try to make happen when things go through my head and for keeping me in line day in and day out. I'm so blessed to call you my friends, I'm blessed to call you my coworkers, and I'm blessed to spend the majority of my days with you, so thank you very much. 
also want to recognize our affiliate organizations that we work daily with, the George H. Henderson Jr. Exposition Staff, Bert Hairgrove, Executive Director, and Debbie Lee Administrator, please stand, as well as Angelina Beautiful Clean, Executive Director, Jennifer LaCourt. We are a family, and we work together every single day, and we have a really good time together. This past year, we celebrated our 100th year as an organization. We kicked off 2019 right here with all of you, taking a look back at the history of our community and celebrating 100 years in the making. We changed our lingo and we started calling you investors instead of members because we truly believe that it is our responsibility to invest back in your business and your employees. We plotted a new vision and adopted the three C's and vowed to become a connector of leaders and influencers, a catalyst for business growth, and a champion for a stronger business community. And we continue to remain focused on our mission, which is to advocate to improve economic prosperity in the business environment in our community. As you know by now, our theme tonight is greater things are yet to come. So hang tight. It's gonna be a great night and a great year. All of this could not have been done without the help of tremendous leadership. And I want to thank the entire 2019 board, the numerous committee chairs, and the hundreds of volunteers that helped make it all possible. We have several board members that are with us tonight that are retiring from the board this year, and I want to especially thank them for their years of service to the chamber. Would you please stand when I call your name? Chris Flanagan with Real Graphics. Kip Havard, Consolidated Communications. Sean Penn, Southwood Drive Animal Clinic. Anthony Pittman, Lockheed Martin. Scott Slusher, PID Group. And Jackie Zimmerman with Zimmerman Communications. Thank you so much for your many hours of dedicated service to our chamber. This past year, our staff had the incredible opportunity to work with one of the kindest men that I've ever known. Terry Morgan, your mentorship, your friendship has meant the world to me. Not only just me, but our entire staff. You were at everything, from almost every ribbon cutting to every business after five, which I swear you won every award you were at. He's the luckiest person I know. To every red carpet salute and five full days of the Texas State Forest Festival, my friend, you were there. You were there with a great attitude, smile, lots of laughter, and funnel cakes. Sit back and take a look at Terry's year as chairman of the board. Terry Morgan is the type of chairman of the board that every organization dreams of having. Um, he is supportive, he's kind, he's really funny, um, but at the same time, he challenges us to be better each and every day. So I met Terry many years ago and have really enjoyed talking to him. I always love hearing his big game stories because as you know, he's a big game hunter and always has fabulous stories about uh, all of his exotic hunts all over the world. Um, and I guess his hobby kind of leads into what I enjoy most about Terry this year, which is his calm, cool, collected self. Uh, Terry's been through a lot of things overseas and African hunts and safaris, none more exciting than the time that he went polar bear hunting and actually went to bed one night in a tent, woke up the next morning and realized part of the glacier had broke off and he was floating out to sea. Uh, I cannot imagine that kind of situation, but again, I think that's what I saw in Terry this year is that he doesn't worry about anything. He rolls up his sleeves, gets the job done. As you know, he went to almost every event whether it was a business after five, he went to all of the ribbon cuttings, the chamber events. Terry and I went to church together for years and years, and then as we moved churches, you know, we still would see each other, but I think the, the favorite memory is just for us reconnecting and seeing him every couple weeks and just to share and catch up with family and talk about that, and then also have the same goal of doing what's best for our community and our county, and to see him there and his passion for it and uh, just serving with him and uh, just enjoying that time we've had together to, to catch back up over those years. One of my favorite memories this year uh, with Terry is the Texas State Forest Festival. If we were at 
the Expo Center than Terry was at the Expo Center. Whether it was 7 a.m. on a Saturday morning for our Lumberjack Fun Run, or whether it was 11 o'clock having a cold beer after the day was over and celebrating the win that day. Um, he was with us the entire time. I, I think uh, he probably never wants to smell fabuloso again because he cleaned every single table, was covered in funnel cakes. Um, but I have to tell you that if you like a good funnel cake, then Terry Morgan is the one to know because he's gonna have one every day. I think he just did a great job communicating at our meetings with the executive board and then our board. And so just picking up from that, uh, the communication, um, going down the agenda, making sure everyone was heard and, and just following that. But I think, you know, more importantly too, uh, he had a great relationship with all the staff at the chamber and that's something we want to grow on because it takes all of us and we're leaving a tremendous legacy with the chamber and with the board and what we're doing and the vision as we move into 2020 and then as we look to the future. So continuing that relationship and you could see that there was definitely care there and uh, that everyone was enjoying working at the chamber and working with the board. And so I want to continue those relationships for sure. Terry, it has been a great time this year working with you and I look forward to next year working with you. Hey Terry, special thanks for all you've done this year as chairman. Your hard work, dedication, and commitment has definitely shown through and uh, just you were extremely visible and active and it's been an honor to serve with you on the executive board. Terry, thank you for your love and your support. Thank you for always encouraging our staff to be the very best that we could be. But most importantly, thank you for being my friend. Rosalind Carter once said that a leader takes people where they want to go, but a great leader takes people where they don't necessarily want to go, but where they ought to be. Thank you for being a great leader. Ladies and gentlemen, your 2019 Chairman of the Board, Terry Morgan. to say I don't want to clean another table at the Forest Festival again. I've, I've had my fill of that. Um, anyway, a year ago I was standing up here talking about the upcoming year and now I'm talking about the year in review. It's been a fast, fun, and a great year. I've thoroughly enjoyed it. The banquet tonight is a celebration of 100 years of the establishment of the Lufkin Angelina County Chamber of Commerce. So take a second, close your eyes, and think back of what it was like 100 years ago. Mud streets, no indoor plumbing, a few automobiles, the telephone was in the infant stage, no internet, computers, television, or cell phones. And I can still agree, I'm okay with no cell phones, but that's what it is. Uh, it's amazing how things develop and, and the future that we're looking at. And, and if you now think of where we are today, what will the next 100 years look like? Serving as the chairman has been an honor, and I appreciate the help and service of the board members. I've said this several times, and I will say it again. I have never seen such an energetic, focused, get-it-done group of women as we have at our chamber. They do a great job, appreciate it, thank you very much. It's now my honor to introduce your new 2020 Chairman of the Board, Brian Sear. Brian is a 1995 graduate of SFA with a Bachelor of Business Administration. In 2000, he returned to school and obtained an MBA, and in 2006, graduated from the Southwestern Graduate School of Banking at SMU. Brian has worked for Commercial Bank for the past 24 years and currently serves as the market president for Angelina County. He is very involved in our community and served on numerous boards, including the ZNOO Railroad, Junior Achievement, Habitat for Humanity, the Texas Bankers Association Foundation, Angelina County Rodeo, 
the Texas Forest Country Partnership, and he has served as the president of the Lions Club and United Way. Brian and his wife, Jennifer, have four children, Maddie, Clay, Witt, and Lauren. Please help me welcome Brian Sear. Come forward. You can take over. I know I don't look that old to be at the bank for 24 years. That's what my wife tells me. Terry, thank you very much. Uh, it has been my pleasure to work with you this year, uh, getting to know you and your wife, Susan, a lot better this year. It's been fabulous. And like the video says, I've never seen somebody roll up their sleeves and work so hard, but now you get to go back to selling insurance instead of cleaning tables. I think it pays a little bit better too, doesn't it? Sorry, Terry, you turned my page. So first of all, I want to thank our outgoing chairman, Terry, like I just did. It has been a pleasure working with you. I want to also thank the incoming board members who, for accepting their responsibility to help lead our chamber into the 101st year as an organization. We continue year after year to put together an outstanding board. I really want to thank David Flowers, Huntington ISD superintendent, for uh, offering to be the incoming chair for next year. Uh, he is a busy schedule, and I know that's not going to be very easy for him, but he always does a fabulous job. So thank you, David. This year, we all look forward to continuing the success we've had thanks to Tara and her staff. I'm certain we will have another progressive and successful year. I know our staff has a lot in the works, and I can tell you that I expect nothing less than another fabulous year here in Angelina County. And Angelina County deserves nothing less than the best. Lastly, I want to thank you for being here tonight, and thank you for supporting your chamber. At this time, I want to recognize the 2020 Executive Board. Please stand as I call your name and remain standing because we have a small oath that we'll ask you to, to say yes to at the end. Chair-elect David Flowers. Vice Chairman Will Alvis, Taylor Haney, Roger Lindsay, and Scott Skelton. Secretary Jackie Polk, Treasurer Melinda Moore, and that is your executive team. Uh, will the rest of the 2020 Board of Directors please stand also, and, and executive team please stay, remain standing as well. Monty Boswick, Malcolm Deason, Christian Dempsey, Randy George Jr., Forrest Griffin, Trey McWilliams, Yana Ogletree, Lynn Torres, Brian Tyler, and Kevin Todd, William Price, and Kevin Pratt. Directors and Executive Committee, you have been selected to represent the investors within the Angelina County Chamber of Commerce and become a part of the governing board to help plan for the future of our business community. You have been chosen to lead us into our 101st year as an organization. That faith goes deeper than standing here before us taking this oath. It represents faith in the future. If you accept the responsibility of helping lead this award-winning chamber, please raise your right hand and say, I do. Thank you, and congratulations, and thanks again for your service. It's going to be a great year, and board, I look forward to working with you in our 101st year. Thank you, Brian, and thank you, Terry. I'd like to now bring up David Perkins, Vice Chairman of the Board of the Piney Woods Foundation, to present the 2019 Golden Anvil Award. Thanks, David. Thank you, Terry. It's not Trey Henderson. You haven't had too much wine. <clears throat> But tonight, on behalf of the Piney Woods Foundation, it's my pleasure to be, have the opportunity to present the Golden Anvil Award to the person or the organization that has, through their recent efforts, made a difference in our community. So please watch this video with me about tonight's recipient. 
In the United States, food waste is estimated at between 30 to 40 percent of the food supply. This estimate corresponds to approximately 133 billion pounds and 161 billion dollars worth of food. This amount of waste has far-reaching impacts on society. Wholesome food that could have helped feed families in need is sent to landfills. Meanwhile, in Angelina County, our recipients unique ideas helping stem the tide of wasted food every day. She had heard about the concept of food recovery through Baylor University's campus kitchen. And so as soon as they moved here, she kind of threw that idea out there and said, you know, I think we could do this in Lufkin. With a passion to do whatever it takes to get food to those in need, our recipient shared with a group of friends her idea of a food recovery program, which repurposes fresh, unused food from schools and donates it to nonprofits that provide free meals in the community. She's the blue sky. She sees the potential of what can be done with an idea, and she's willing and determined to make that work. Um, you know, this morning I was reading something and there was a quote and I thought, you know, that pretty much nails it. It was that courage is not the absence of fear, but instead it's the ability to move forward despite those fears with your faith and God's help, right? And we had those fears like, okay, are we going to get volunteers? Is there going to be food for us to recover? Who's going to be the recipient of this food? There, we know there are needy people, but how do we get it into the hands of the people who need it? The group quickly picked up the torch and began the work to start Second Helpings. In the summer of 2017, a pilot program began with volunteers taking leftover food from the Lufkin ISD summer feeding programs at Lufkin High School and Slack Elementary and delivering it to several area nonprofits that provide meals. That pilot program was proof positive there is an overwhelming amount of food that can be saved from the landfill with a little effort and a lot of volunteers. And in the first two weeks of recovering food um, from that summer feeding program, we recovered 6,800 servings of food. And so we knew we were onto something. And we said, okay, we're, there's really a need here and the folks in our community could use this. We all got our food handler's licenses. We you know, purchased these insulated boxes and we just set out and started collecting food. The program expanded to accept food daily from Lufkin High and Lufkin Middle Schools, and in 2018, the kitchens of Slack and Burley were added. More than 100 volunteers are working from the organization's headquarters in a Lufkin business that is generously providing space to operate the program. It's a pretty staggering total uh, in the amount of servings that we've recovered. To date, from all four campuses, we've recovered 197,000 servings of food. From Lufkin High School alone, we've recovered 98,000 servings of food. From Lufkin Middle School, 73,000 servings of food. And from Slack and Burley Primary, respectively, about 22, 23,000 servings each. Volunteers pick up special warming boxes from the organization's location and take them to the school's kitchens where the cafeteria staff loads the leftover food. Those boxes are then delivered to the nonprofits. The recovered food is paired with other foods to complete the meals for that day and possibly the next. Along with food delivery, Second Helping schedules some leftovers to be frozen each week in order to have food immediately available for emergency needs by local organizations and individuals. A monthly schedule lists volunteers for each day, the school they pick up from, and the nonprofit they'll deliver to. Currently, food is delivered to the Salvation Army, Family Crisis Center, Christian Men's Job Corps, God Tell, and several others. So without the Second Helpings uh, program, it would be very difficult for us to provide the need for food to the community because they bring us vegetables, they bring us fruit, they bring us nutritious food. And unfortunately, the people that we serve do not have capabilities to, to get those types of food. My second help is being able to offer that to us. That helps us out financially because if we didn't have them, then we would have to look for other funding source in order to go out and get 
food uh, for the program that we have here at our facility. So we'd be spending a lot, of, a lot of other money that we can use throughout other social service programs, uh, with like helping out with rent assistance, utility assistance. And of course, volunteers are always needed, especially as this organization grows. Not a small task feeding hundreds in our community daily, but our recipient is passionate about people in need, especially families and children who are hungry. She's not afraid to ask anyone to participate by volunteering or recruiting recipient organizations. How lucky are we that our recipient moved here only about three years ago and has already made an impact in the lives of so many by bringing ideas, passion, and a drive to serve to our hometown. She is a passionate person and she loves people so much. Um, she is driven. I don't think she let anything get in the way of something she wants to do. If she's on a mission, Katie, bar the door. Tonight, we honor Aurelia Newton for her drive, determination, and passion to develop innovative ways to feed the hungry in our community. Please join me in welcoming our 2020 Golden Anvil recipient, Aurelia Newton, with the Second Helping Program. Her daughter and son-in-law snuck in here. I don't know if you know that. <laughs> oh my goodness. <clears throat> well, I couldn't do it without the crew of ladies that went with me to Waco. And there are a lot of them sitting back there and I tried to get them to come up here with me, but. <laughs> um, I, you know, I've always taught my kids, we used to say, they'd come in from school and they'd go, I'm just starving. And I'm like, no, you are not starving. You're just hungry. And you think you're hungry and that's okay. It's okay to be hungry. Then you know that you have food to eat. And it's just amazing to me, even when I go around the back of Walmart and I see that there's this big dumpster full of vegetables or full of fruit and they've thrown it out just because it may have a bruise on it. There are people that would eat it even with a bruise on it. And so there are people that don't have food and so it's just something that even the cafeteria ladies are excited knowing that that food is not, that they don't have to throw it away. And this uh, law was passed in the state of Texas by the Senate that if you're a 501c3, you can recover food as long as you're getting to the people that need it. And that's what we do. And if you're interested in helping us, we're always looking for more volunteers to pick up food at the schools. So we'd love to talk to you about how you can help us. And thank you very much for this honor. It's always fun to get to surprise people. Would you please help me welcome Jay Shands, East Texas Regional President with Southside Bank to present the 2019 Angelina Award. Thank you. This is uh, such a special occasion, a hundred year anniversary and such a beautiful crowd. And, let me say, it's so nice, David, not to follow Trey Henderson where the, the speaker's up here and you have to go Rang. But anyway, uh, and second, second Helpings, that is such a beautiful ministry and, and I am so pleased uh, that you've got the award tonight. Now the Angelina Award is given to a person or persons who have over their lifetime made a difference in our community. 
This year, we honor a group of men who have never sought the spotlight in the more than 30 years they have been raising money to benefit local students and nonprofits in our community. Please watch our video. The Round Table of King Arthur's Court, according to legend, was a fellowship of knights who followed a strict code of honor and service. The table was round so that all the knights seated around it would have the same stature. It was not just a table. It represented the highest order of chivalry in King Arthur's Court. While a group of Lufkin men might not be knights from King Arthur's day, their acts of caring, kindness, and giving to this community, which developed around their own round table, have made them legends to us all. It all started in late 1970s when a group of men began gathering before work every morning at KC Platt's Feed Store in downtown Lufkin to drink coffee and chat before starting their day. We got up early, we drank coffee. Got and, up before it's time to go to work. Yeah, and, and it was, uh, it just started out with... Uh, one or two. Yeah. And then, and and then, then it just grew, and liked it. just grew from there. Yeah. In 1982, Alan Day brought his handmade round table to Southland Feed, and with that began the legend of the round table. The group changed their meeting location just once in their 40 years, picking up their table and moving it to Lufkin Farm Supply, which has been their home since 1994. In the early 1980s, the morning meetings turned into evening gatherings, getting together once a month to cook for their families. But then whenever we got started doing these uh, once a month cookings, uh, where two or three of us would be a team. That's where it all, and that probably lasted three years, yeah, two or three sure years. Did. It was during one of these dinners, the group decided to donate their cooking skills to a fundraising event. And so their first donation was a fish fry for 100 people as an auction item at the second Expo Center anniversary party. Little did they know, one fish fry in 1988 would be the beginning of a more than 30 year project that has afforded them the opportunity to raise thousands of dollars to help hundreds of Angelina County students with college expenses. That first fish fry was purchased by the daughter of a Fort Smith, Arkansas couple to celebrate their 35th anniversary. In August of 1988, the group traveled at their own expense to cook for Mary Ann and David McMahon at their Arkansas ranch. Dave's daughter was with the uh... Texas Angus. Angus. Texas Angus Association in Fort Worth. Yeah. See, I told you it takes two of us to tell this. And she came down, she was invited to the expo party. I guess Raymond invited her. And uh, she came down, high bid her on the, on the 100 fish fry. And all of a sudden, we realized we were going to have to be going up there. So impressed with the dinner and the group of Lufkin men, McMahon handed the group a check for $10,000. While they turned it down at first, they eventually kept the check at the insistence of McMahon. However, the group had no idea what to do with such a large windfall. In October of that same year, it became clear how the money was to be used. That $10,000 started the Chuck Arnold Memorial Scholarship. The first scholarships were awarded in the spring of 1989. In the more than 30 years since it started, the group has awarded scholarships totaling more than half a million dollars. There is no specific number of students selected each year. The members of this group interview every student who applies and determines the best recipients. Students from all Angelina County school districts and home schools are invited to apply. We don't really care where they go to college, but I've asked all those at Hudson, before you set a tap route, come back and look and see if there's an opportunity here because you're, you're our people. I mean, you're a fit here before you decide and then go where you think you need to be. The scholarships are available to students involved in FFA and 4-H in planning to pursue their education at a college or trade school. While the scholarship is the group's main fundraiser, they have assisted many local nonprofits throughout the years by donating the food and cooking for events of all sorts. We pay up front for, the, for all the supplies, and then we deduct that from the net sales, and then all the rest of that goes to that. We never took any money from it. We've cooked in Oklahoma, we've cooked in Michigan, we've cooked in, well, in Arkansas, where, Tennessee. Tennessee. Matter of fact, Raymond and I went up and cooked in Chicago and from uh, stuff like that. So, you know, we were doing a fair amount of traveling. And we went to Arkansas every year for 20 years, didn't we, Charlie? Yeah. Their ribeye sandwiches have become legendary. I think that's one of the draws with when we're cooking and we don't really think about it, don't really know it. 
One can say something and the other will argue about it and all of a sudden everybody's fussing and raising hell. And I think they kind of, I think the people that are waiting on sandwiches kind of get a kick out of listening to all that BS. Because <laughs> the world, there's a lot of BS in this world. And I love it. I mean, I live for this. I don't like to miss this. Do you? Hey, you don't like to miss it either, do you? It just, it's just something that you do. and. It's a disease is what the hell it is, <laughs> but, but <laughs> it's not curable. <laughs> we don't do a lot of politics. We, uh, other than the mayor's part of our group, uh, he catches a lot of heck uh, because everything's not done like we think it should be. <laughs> but he ran for it and he's fair game. I mean, he's, nothing wrong with that. And then, but we do tell him when he's done something good, we'll do a little of it. You remember when? <laughs> but but we, well, we don't just grow a bunch of roses on him. But, but we do. Anyway. We talk about family. Um, I talk about fishing. Uh, today we had a guest here that had just gotten back in from a deer, big deer hunt and had pictures. And, you know, we sit around ooh and awe about that out of our group. There are at least six of us that have lost a child. Yeah. I lost one at 13. Charlie lost his at 16, maybe. Some, I can't remember. But even adult uh, children and all that stuff, there's a bond that grows in something like that. You know, we, Bob Brown lost one. I, I, Peyton yeah, Mathis Barry lost, lost one. one. I mean, Joe it, Barry it, it, lost one. It, it, so we're probably leaving somebody out, but. Yeah. There's a bond that grows right there that you can't explain because we've been through it, we know what it's like, and uh, it just draws you close. While several of the trusted men have left this life, they will not be forgotten as a younger generation of Lufkin men step up to continue the good deeds, begun by a group of men who, because of their selfless and giving nature, have done so much good in this community. I think that people that do things and aren't looking for recognition or giving the best gift. You don't do it so somebody will brag on you. You don't do it uh, for any reason other than this. Yeah, it's just the right thing to do. Isn't it, Charlie? Yeah. Tonight, we honor the men of the round table <clears throat> who have unselfishly given so much of their time to help the youth of our community achieve the dreams of going to college. I'd like to welcome the round table up to receive their award, please. And so it goes. Bob. 
get up here. Thank you, Jay. Thank you, Chamber. Thank you, Board. We appreciate what you've done for us. I tell you, it's a lot easier to get a red apron and a cooking job than get a suit on this bunch of monkeys, I'll tell you. <laughs> we, we're pretty independent, and we just kind of do it the way we want to do it. Uh, this isn't our normal wardrobe. We're much more comfortable in the blue jeans khakis, a pair of shorts, or a pair of overalls. So this really isn't representative of us. One thing I'd like to tell you about this group, we are a let's just get it done group, not a group that likes to talk about it. And I think that's East Texas, what East Texas way of doing what needs to be done here. Raymond Moore was instrumental in getting this group together at the feet at the feed store, like you've been told. Raymond also came up with the ribeye sandwich that's really been a benefactor to us. It's really been something. Those grilled onions at the Expo Center, they're habit forming. They're probably illegal, but we get away with it. And <laughs> they seem to like them. Raymond Moore received this award back in 1990-something. And he gave the most memorable acceptance speech that I've ever heard from up here or from any other podium that I was around. And we'd like to dedicate this thing tonight to Raymond. Well, before I do that, I, I want you to know that our, our group ranges from the 80s to the 70s and the 60s and on down to this young man standing right here by me. I want you all to meet Noble. Noble is our youngest member, and he's a brand new Eagle Scout. And we're so proud of this young man. If, if y'all will <laughs> help me with that. You stand here, buddy. I'm just going to tell you what you want to do. Okay. I mentioned Raymond and the fact that he won this, and I mentioned what he said. That's what we want to do tonight. Raymond took the award, and he looked at it, and he looked up at the crowd, and he said, wow, thanks. And he sat down. <laughs> good enough for Raymond. It's good enough for us. Thank you so much. We appreciate you. Y'all don't go anywhere because uh, they're going to lead the line dancing uh, when the music. I don't know where we go after that. Congratulations to all of our winners tonight. We want to once again extend a very special thank you to Josh Gentry with the City of Lufkin, Channel 15, Casey Clark. Jackie Zimmerman and Blake Polino for all of their work on the videos and our promotional products. 
We also want to acknowledge and thank the diplomats and the 1920 Leadership Tomorrow class for their assistance with the banquet and for helping serve our meal. And again, thank you to all of our banquet sponsors and our partners in trade, Premier Kia, Pilgrims, CHI St. Luke's Health Memorial, Lockheed Martin, Southside Bank, Angelina College, Lee Trans, KTRE, the Left Gun Daily News, A1 Party Rental, who has outdone herself next door. I cannot wait to see what's happening over there. Angelina Brewing Company for providing all of the delicious beer tonight. Brickshire Brothers, who is doing the beautiful cake and 1921 catering. Liza's Gardens, who always outdoes herself. Would you give them a round of applause for the beautiful decorations? <laughs> Sound Techs. And Janelle Short, who certainly deserves a round of applause for the beautiful stage and the crazy vision that was in my head that she may come to life. Thank you so much, Janelle. I'm so proud of all that we have accomplished in our 100th year as an organization, but man, am I excited about what's to come. Several months ago, I was rocking Annalie, our daughter, to sleep as I do every night, and she loves to listen to praise baby, praise and worship music every night on Pandora. The song Greater Things Are Yet to Come by Chris Tomlin came on and it was like a light bulb went off and I thought, man, that's it. That is what this year is about. Greater things are yet to come. I literally sat rocking and I had tears running down my cheeks because if, if you know me, you know that I'm emotional and if I get sad about something, I cry. And if I'm sad about something, I cry. But I just know that what our community is built on, it's a firm foundation. We have so many people that are in this audience tonight that are past chairmen of the board. Would you please stand if you're a former chairman of the board because you have helped lead this organization into our 101st year. Our foundation is strong from our former chairmen of the board to the former men who had this job before I came along who laid a great foundation for us. From our faith to our community, the foundation in Lufkin and Angelina County, it's a strong one. We're not built on sand. We're built on a firm rock. We have incredible people that have come before us to make a path for us to follow. But it's in the lyrics of that song that we are reminded that we are not done. Greater things are yet to come. Greater things are still to be done for the city. And it's our responsibility to build and to continue to motivate and move our community forward. We have to train, we have to teach the next generations to be those next movers and shakers and to be the next visionaries of Lufkin and Angelina County. For the first time in a long time, Lufkin and Nacogdoches leaders are working together to continue to build those bridges. Angelina College and SFA continue to work together to have incredible opportunities for furthering education for our students. The East Texas Manufacturing Alliance is growing and thriving thanks to a two-year grant funded by the TLL Temple Foundation and hard work of many volunteers that are in this audience tonight. We're excited to be holding the inaugural Manufacturer's Day, February 12th, where we are busing 100 kids from the Angelina County Schools and 100 kids from the Nacogdoches County Schools to come and hear from over 30 manufacturers about opportunities for furthering their educations and for careers to keep them right here at home. Our two chambers are working together to plan Lufkin, Angelina County, Nacogdoches SFA Day. And don't worry, we're gonna come up with a shorter name than that <laughs> for next year. And we're excited to already be planning our trip to Austin together because we know as one voice, we can make a bigger difference for our region. We are going to be focused on issues, whether it's transportation or healthcare, we're going as a team and as a community to make our region stronger. Tara Hendricks and I are so excited. We have planned out your entire 2020 calendar. Every speaker for every single event that the Chamber is putting on is confirmed. Every topic has been carefully picked so that you, our investors, can plan what is best for you and your employees to get involved in. We want you to know that we have a vision as the Chamber, but we hope that our vision 
lines up with what your vision is because we want to be an integral part of helping make your business successful. We want to give your employees tangible tools to be able to take back and implement into your business to help make you stronger because we know that when you are stronger, we are stronger. We believe that greater things are yet to come if we will just all continue to work together. And speaking of greater things, our leadership programs are not only thriving, but they are growing. This month, we're so excited that Ashley Berry has joined our dynamic team as the Director of Leadership Programs, and I cannot think of a better person to be able to take our 39 and 29-year-old leadership programs to the next level. Enlighten, empower, and engage. Those are the points that we're focused on for our leadership programs. We're building a stronger generation of young leaders through our Leadership Tomorrow program. And for the very first time, Ashley and Ty Cawthon have developed a leadership curriculum for the students that they will be implementing and also having a leadership forum this coming October. They will not only be teaching leadership skills to the kids, but making sure that they have the resources and the skills so that when they graduate the Leadership Tomorrow program, they are employable right here in Angelina County. Leadership Lufkin continues to grow and we are developing a new curriculum using dynamic local speakers to enhance our already successful programs. Ashley's also going to be presenting opportunities to gain leadership certifications to help build a stronger network between our business and our nonprofit organizations. And the Leadership Lufkin program is about to get a complete overhaul. Lead, lead, engage, advance, and develop. Through updating the program, we will be developing a network of leaders who are equipped with the skills and the insights to work collaboratively across the industries and positively impact Angelina County. And if that's not enough, get ready for Encore. This executive leadership program will focus on what comes after Leadership Lufkin. We will be bringing in renowned worldwide speakers right here at home to help train our employees on ways to become leaders of character. Because my friends, greater things are yet to come.